From deep in the wilds of Pittsfield Township, Michigan, it's the Grace and Paul Podcast. She's a left-wing conservative Catholic homeschooler who loves to garden. He's a bearded computer geek who reads and writes like he's running out of time. Together, they're raising an ever-growing army of adorable children and planning the revolution. Your wolf was a little flat this time. <laughs> it was a little Scooby-Doo. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't going for Scooby-Doo, but he came out. Yeah. So, you All know, right. you do what you can. Here we yeah. go. Okay. So, we have missed two weeks. Yeah. And we're bad people. Yeah. We deserve punishment. I'm just hoping to stay out of hell. Really, that's my, those are my hopes right now. <laughs> I I have given hope to the Dunedain. I kept none for, for myself. myself. Um. So what's been going on? <laughs> it feels like we haven't been in here for forever. Oh, I know. Well, we oh we said a um the LB said a, a, a surgery date of December fourteenth. So we have a a tentative birthday. If, yes. If nothing else happens that would trigger them to take the baby out earlier. That's the baby's birthday. That's the baby's birthday. We still haven't agreed on na- all our names. I think we've agreed on a girl's name. Yes. But I think the, mo- the more pressing priority is a boy's name because it'll probably be a boy. Yeah, that seems to be the trend, but um, who knows. Okay, so I've got to buckle down and do some do some uh, thinking about a boy's yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your first, remember your first impulse yes. was to name it Paul Jr. Yeah, I thought maybe now that we have... So many, <laughs> so, much, so many boys. So many boys. We could. You know. I could get a mini me, you know. Well, you know. But if I did, irony would dictate, and the universe is nothing if not ironic, that this child would be absolutely nothing, nothing like, like me. You. It would yes. be like this one's going to be a football player, you know, like. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't play football. We're worried about your brain. <laughs> but I gotta play, Mom. I gotta play. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? It, his brain's fine. It's not that much to protect, honestly. Stop. Okay. <laughs> no. So, um, yeah. So we'll we'll get back to you with news about the baby. But I, but this actually dictates a lot because you are tired. And uh, yeah, I'm exhausted. You're starting to feel it, yeah. and I, yeah, I'm really starting to feel it. And so you're not able to hold up as many household tasks as no. you were, which means yeah. I'm trying to pick up slack more. Right. And so, and which it's not means just I'm that. tired. <laughs> it's there's also me, like I'm. I feel like I'm everywhere all the time now. I've got like I'm up to like two or yeah, three you, OB appointments a week now. Right. Right. Which it's just it's that's harder to me when it was one a week so yeah you know, yeah they're one watching every two weeks you know i guess you sh- we should be grateful that they're watching the progress of this baby closely but um, yeah but yeah and you're also but, the kids are now um more engaged in activities around here yeah. than they have been since yeah. we moved right he's got a youth group mary and pippin um yeah josh so, pippin of choir yeah both and them. yeah so so the kids are finally like doing more stuff outside the house with these different groups which is good which is good except that oh we were also traveling to the martins every weekend right so oh well a couple of weekends but so yeah. we've been like uh, we're using more gas than we have at any time since we were driving isaac to and from school daily to a yeah. school 45 minutes away yeah and spending 800 dollars a month on gas yeah that and that was like 10 no eight years ago yeah that was eight years ago yeah and well what's the oh and then there's a whole array of like therapy appointments so the good news is we found we finally got referrals to therapists for yes. various issues but now now we have to to take them all the now we have time to take them all the time which is Parking and driving, parking and, and driving constantly. And hassle and this and more. Sam is getting speech therapy, which Finally. we're both very happy about because uh, he needs it. He needs it. He has an interesting diagnosis too. Yes. Which I didn't even know this was a thing. So I'm frantically reading up on it. Right. Um, his he doesn't stutter exactly. He does something called cluttering. Right. Where I don't know if I can describe it accurately, but as describe as, it is distinct from stuttering. Yeah. Well, as soon as I watched a video of a person who has this disorder, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's totally Sam. Sam. He um he 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to demonstrate. <laughs> he um, skips over intermediate words and phrases, mm -hmm. and his speech is very stop-start. So hesitates, speeds way up. Hesitates, speeds, speeds way, way up. up. And he thinks that he's said all the words that he's thinking, but in fact he's skipped a lot of words. He and said, sometimes, said half. Yeah, and sometimes skipped syllables in words. Because not only has he skipped words, he's repeated the same half yeah. over and over. Right. So right. some so that's so it sounds a little like stuttering sometimes, but really it's this stop start like rushing over words. Right. And you you're left to try and pick up like literally the fragments of the words he did get out and try and figure out what he meant. And right. So it's very hard to follow him in conversation yeah. and, and engage conversation yeah. with him. Especially people that don't know him well, right? Because you, if you don't know him well already, you don't have an incentive to like carefully listen and ask him listen, to repeat, right. pick apart what he's saying. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty good at understanding him, but strangers maybe not so much. Right. And he does have a lot of coping strategies for dealing with strangers. Yeah. Well, he'll like he's got one practice sentence. Yeah. Is where he says, "I'm Sam. I'm Sam Potts. I'm yeah. autistic. Yeah. It's hard for me to communicate." Yeah. Oh, please be patient. Yeah. So he'll say that to people when he walks into a store and tries to ask for information right. or, you know, service or whatnot. Yeah. Um, Benjamin, though, pretty pretty clearly has what I would call a classic stutter, where yeah. he's literally stuck on a word. And can't uh, and get it can't out. can't get the word out and keeps restarting the word over and over again. Right. Uh, but we're actually, I think, a little less concerned about him because that sort of stutter really d does tend to improve with time. With time. And he's young still. He just turned five. Yeah. And I, some of these things you actually want to... Some things, a lot of them actually, yeah. you want to wait and see what happens. Right. I mean, I, I'm not... Don't take this as, as um, trash-talking um, early intervention. Right. Um but some of these things, I mean, early intervention should allow you to, to discern, right. oh, this we need to take action on now, right. versus, oh, you know what, let's just wait and see what happens with this, and see how natural development mm -hmm. closes these gaps. Takes care of it. Right. Yeah, and oddly enough, I mean, he, he does this stuttering, and sometimes he's completely stalled, and it takes forever to get a word out. But yes. yet, much of, you know, much or most of the time, he communicates okay. Yes. It sort of shows up in waves, you know, and yes. it's not necessarily when he's under stress or anything. It's just, no. it's hard to, it's hard to point I'm like, not sure what triggers it. But, yeah, a trigger for it. Yeah. But he's also getting um, uh, a class. Actually, it's it's you and I who are getting a class. He's doing an evaluation and we're getting a class, like the class we took for Sam when he was okay. not speaking at all. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Um to kind of help Benjamin, not so much with his stutter, but with his play problem. His frustration. Like he can't, he can only play with other kids if they want to play what he wants to play. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you know, God help you. Yeah. Him. It very quickly turns into screaming and Just crying. Just screaming and crying. Yeah. Um, if, like he can't negotiate. Yeah. To a game or a, game a shared or anything. activity. Right. Yeah. It's his way or the highway or a meltdown. Right. All right. So, so no. today we sh we sheared him too. <laughs> I stuck him in the tub. I washed his hair with two rounds of straight conditioner yep. and combed it out, much to his rage. Much to his rage uh, and consternation. Um, and then we stuck him on the stool, and I put the one half inch guard on the clippers and Stick it all shaved down. his. <laughs> Not, not literally shaved. It actually, it actually looks fine. It's it adorable. looks fine. That's the thing. It seems like I'm doing so much violence to their hair. No. But the ones with the super curly hair, like ten minutes after you think you've just taken off most of their hair, you look and it looks perfectly normal. Yeah, it's a big know? puffy afro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, or so. a shorter puffy afro. A short puffy afro, but still kind of big. Uh, right. Right. For someone who just so lost so much hair. back up right. again. It's like a, well, no, there's a pile of hair the size of a baby yeah, on the floor. Right. <laughs> so how could there be hair left? Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so you've been tired. You've been driving all over creation. We've been using yeah. a huge amount of gas yes. and rest, trying, dealing with the trying, kids. Trying. Uh, it's it's a lot. And it's then, always tedious, you know, especially yeah. when, especially if they sense blood in the water, right? Oh, They're yeah. like, oh. Mom's tired. Let's let's screw let's around. Let's raise hell. You know? Yeah, let's do every because she's not gonna be able to chase us down and watch us closely. Let's do all the stuff we're oh not supposed God. to do. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's kind of lots awful. of that, lots of that. But we had, um, we're we're also. I'm stressed out, and I'm feeling the effects physically. Mm-hmm. Um, the situation with our housemates is still going on. They're still here, and I talk about that a lot in a lot of detail in oh, in your my blog. blog. Yeah. I'm not going to get into it much on this, but um, we we haven't been. You know, it, it didn't work out really the way we hoped as far as being able to oh no i i'd hope do things together share meals plan things together well and more moreover i'd hoped that this could be a segue to um uh, the support network needed to get back on track into an or not even back on track but on track yeah to an independent living situation that we would be talking to each other a lot about how to collaborate on that and sure. help and what yeah. help we could give yeah, yeah. And it mostly isn't. Um, yeah, and there are a variety of reasons. Yeah. But um, uh, you know, it it did not go as smoothly or as well as we'd hoped. But you know, yeah. we're all alive. Um, yeah, but physically, I'm very stressed out mm-hmm. by that, among other things. Also, the issue of what to do with the old house is still not resolved. Hanging like Damocles' sword, just yeah. hanging there. And we still we ha- had our attorney write up a formal. Lease, lease to own kind of offer. No, no, don't, no. Don't, don't lease call it that. It is a purchase option. Oh, lease, 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 with, lease a, with a purchase option. Correct. Okay. Lease to own is something different and not entirely legal and frequently All right. a mess in court. Okay. This is a lease with a purchase option. Well, anyway, we, in order to try and avoid violating any terms of our mortgage or anything like that, we, right. um, we had our attorney work on it. Yeah. Um, and... Because lease to own and land contract yeah. on a house where you have a mortgage is actually a violation of your mortgage Maybe, contract. Yeah, you can wind up having your house repossessed or whatever. All kinds of things. Suit or, um, yeah. Anyway, so we've offered this to a woman in Saginaw. Right. Um, and it's... A while back. It's been a few weeks now, and she was going to take it to her attorney to have her attorney look it over and say, yeah, this is legit or whatnot. Yeah. But we don't have an answer yet. Nope. And meanwhile, we had to decide if we were putting a furnace in or right. not. And right. it's not a small decision because that's. Um, we did learn that it doesn't seem like we really need to put in a repl- to replace the second furnace. Right. Yeah. Which is great. Which is great. Because, I mean, and I understand the motivation that some might have yeah. to replace that furnace, which is. 40 years old. Yes. It's been there since 1978. Yes. But it still works. We're told it's been very thoroughly inspected. We're told it is still working, and it's not actually a safety hazard at the present time. It doesn't right. vent carbon monoxide. It's burning fine. Heating So cord. Yeah. Right. So that works. So we're not going to tackle that right now. But we had to say, all right, you know what? We're going to go ahead and put in a furnace, which means we wrote a check for $3,000 that we don't have. So, yeah. so both our credit cards are nearly maxed out, and yep. the um, we have a line of credit on our checking account to cover overdrafts. Yeah, and this will borrow something like half of that. Something, yeah, like that. Yeah, um, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. So it's really coming down to like we're just Wire. about out of money. Just about know? out of money. Just about out of credit. And so. You know, but if at least at least the holidays aren't coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people keep talking about this. <sighs> um, I have for years embraced a low cost, yes, high experience holiday yes. effort. Yes. So when the children but, ask me what we're doing for Christmas, right. I tell them we're going to mass, right. like we do every year, because right. that's largely all we do other we than do, spend time together. We do not buy a lot of gifts. We may buy almost no gifts some uh, years. We have and usually get them something along the lines of an orange, some candy, art supplies, socks, socks and underwear. underwear. <laughs> I mean, literally socks, yes. underwear, pencils, yeah. Yeah. art supplies. Yeah, and it's been my habit now also um, for New Year's Day right. to get them a big Lego set for all of them to work together to put together to have a new year's day project that's that's been my habit for a few years now 
Right. Uh, however, we also we have embraced the kind of activity side of it, which means in part we like to have some nice meals. Yeah, some nice meals. Which means we make some good extra food expenses because to I, some extent, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, well, we get wine. I've been stocking up on wine, and so you know, it's it's like it's just. Everything is coming down to the wire at once, and it also our car gave out. And oh, that was fun! Boom, fifteen hundred bucks, um, fuel yeah. pump, and all that in the Tahoe. Um, yeah, that was. Nice. And that was like almost the worst possible time for that to happen. Yeah. So, you well, know, we're all alive. We're all alive. If, the, if all this goes through, if we have another major car breakdown, it's just going to have to stay broken down. We're going to have to right. figure out how to get me to work with, with one, one car. car. Right. And you know, and then triage everything else. Yeah. Right. Like Yeah. So Lord help us. Lord help us. So um there it is. And yeah. we had to and yeah, that um fifteen hundred dollar car repair, that was gonna go towards getting our fireplaces. Yeah, the fireplaces ready. and the boiler. Yeah. Oh yeah. we oh that's another little detail. We don't have any heat in our house. <laughs> Well, we haven't turned the boiler on it because it needs to be serviced. Yeah. yeah. So, but to to put it in perspective, um, in Saginaw, which is colder, yeah. we made it a habit never to turn the heat on until November 1st. Yep. It happened. Except we did, you know, like... I think last time, the last, last year. The, the, last the, year. The, the last year we were there, I did break down and say, you know what? My nose is running constantly. I'm coughing and sneezing. I feel, you know, shivering all the time. Got to turn the heat on. I, I broke, you know... But um, no, you know, Englander, New Englander's never break. <laughs> Sorry, no, yeah, we're not from the cold. If you anyway. were sick, you would have, you might have changed your mind. Uh, maybe, but so and but um, and the, it's not. A, I should say it's not actually cold in the house yet. No, it's even, not actually cold. even when it's dipping down to freezing. Freezing some outside. of these nights. Our yeah. our new house is very well insulated, so and we're so we you know, It's the, cool. Like, yeah, you know, we're in the sixties. Right. Pretty much, no matter what happens outside. Yeah, it's it's cool, and but we do need to get. So we have an appointment to get someone out to look at the boiler because it was leaking water all over the floor. Yeah, it was a little and a little some iffy. valves or taps or something need to be replaced. And I want to just make sure that it's like he can like flush it and fill it and make sure it's actually ready. I don't want to turn it on if there's not enough water in the system. You know, right? That could be bad. I don't really know from broilers. <laughs> Boilers, wait. Yeah, a furnace. For, is, I don't furnace know my. Make sense. I don't know my broilers from, from my boilers, boilers, but I know that it probably should have enough water in it for yes for, a for it to boil hot water system. I mean, if it's boiling, it should have water. Yeah, yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So we have a gas boiler, Which, supposedly a very very reliable yes. system that lasts forever, but it does need maintenance. That's so like a furnace, you can kind of ignore it for yeah. years and years. I mean, yeah. you want to change your filters, but other than that, you can kind of ignore it. Yeah. Um, boilers need you to take a look and tinker probably once a year. And yeah. outside of that, there's no downside. Yeah. They just keep trucking. So last last um, weekend, yeah, we celebrated a little thing. Oh, yeah. We had an anniversary. It was nice. And uh, kind of hoping to do a podcast of some kind. Even we were trying to think if we could just sit quietly for a few minutes with a portable recorder and, and talk. just talk for like 15 minutes yeah and it, it did not work <laughs> didn't happen for us yeah but it us. was our 17th wedding anniversary oh yeah and it's been uh, good yeah i want i still want another 17 years though and i'm <laughs> feeling kind of tired <laughs> yeah i'll do my best minimum 17 minimum, i'll really. do my best yeah. I, I'm not even sh- sure that I'm going to make it through next week, you know. <laughs> I think next week will bring us some, some answers one way or another on something. So. Uh, they're just It's just been a, a stressful slog getting there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's that. So, uh, we're sorry, the dog ate our homework, you know. Dog ate um, our homework. I overslept. Yeah, we haven't been. So many times. <laughs> We're barely getting through our regular activities. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah, Eleanor was sick last week. Oh, like, yeah. Mildly sick, and which meant she was keeping up, keeping us up half the half night. The she kept night. waking us waking up. up. Rah, rah, rah. 
a grousing little scream. And yeah, she she goes directly from zero to sixty. So she, right. she wakes up in the middle of the night, and it's not like she fusses a little if her nose is runny. She just screams her head off. Ah, <laughs> ah, yeah, goes Maybe? right Sweetheart? to screaming the head off. Yeah, yeah. Nothing if not direct. She's yeah, really, yeah she's and you really know, my girl. Yeah. And then you know when I manage to lower my heart rate and like get the black spots uh, to clear from before my eyes and unclench my fingers from the covers, I'm like, "What is it, dear? What is it, baby? <laughs> Sweet, adorable baby." <laughs> Throw myself off the ceiling. <laughs> Go from yeah. a deep sleep to terror, <laughs> terrorized. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm aging. I'm aging. Definitely yeah. feeling it. Mm-hmm. I'm growing my hair out, though. Yeah. I'm growing my hair out long. And yesterday to mess, I wore in a ponytail, and there are still some pieces on the side that are too short to go in the ponytail. Uh-huh. So you put hair clips in my hair to keep Fetching. them from forming these little wings that Fetching. fluff out and get in my face. Yeah. But I'm... Uh, I'm going. To, I'm going to. I'm committed to growing it out long enough to have it all in a ponytail. And yeah. um, there, there's a thing, yeah. And the thing, You're a communist too. The thing is, the thing I'm trying to do is basically take some small, personal, visible stand against creeping fascism. It's not creeping anymore. Yeah. So this brings us to our topic. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, that that's another thing that's been making me feeling physically stressed and exhausted mm-hmm. is the news. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's I mean it's like you talk about reading the news and your heart was broken by the events in Pittsburgh or whatever. It's like, yeah. well, how does your heart break if your heart is 80% scar tissue at this point? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, it, you you can't give it the empathy that the situation deserves when it happens every week. I, I I gotta say I'm in a different place. Yeah. With the news, and with um, with with just a, with everything politics and all. Yeah. I, I and I hear some people talk about how they're tired of politics, and there's this sort of immediate, um, well, that's very privileged, <laughs> you know, and um, it, it's it's not that I'm tired of politics. I'm well, tired of the same politics. And I think that's what a lot of people. I mean, I can't speak for anyone yeah. and what's in their brains or what's going on for them. But I know that I myself have this kind of like, wow, so we're just going to keep doing this. Yeah. Okay. So, so more of the same, huh? More of the same. And, All right. Yeah. Fascinating. And, and Yeah. And I feel like the only pushback we see in promoted in the media and whatnot is, is hey, hey everyone let's have some tepid half half-assed electoral solutions to these yeah horrifying problems yeah it's worked so well yeah so to solve mass murder and and um, genocide genocide be, be sure, sure to get out and vote out. for the lesser of two evils yeah, great. you can't see her but grace has a, a idiotic grin plastered <laughs> on her face <laughs> So it's really so in that respect yeah i'm sick of politics or i'm bored with politics like yeah i'd like to talk about something right. else in politics right i'm sick of having this conversation over right. and over again like about guns like know. about guns oh for god's sake yeah. okay like it you know there's it, it's like groundhog day with the guns yes so that's the tired of politics that i'm in like this is just groundhog day right, right. um now that said it's less that I'm. It's less that I'm heartbroken by the news. And it's all heartbreaking. I don't mean to dismiss that fact. In reality. Mm-hmm. But more that, um, I don't know. Um, growing up in my household. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We were, we were raised for this. Uh, to be activists, right? We, no, we were raised to resp- yeah to respond to this. Yeah, that. Yeah, and I have almost like this cold sweat. Oh, it's the eve of a battle. <laughs> that's more. That's more where I'm at than like heartbreak. Yeah, like I was heartbroken in two thousand three. Right. right. You know, I was heartbroken in the mid nineties. 
now I'm like, oh, here it is. I like <laughs> it. They warned us about this. Yeah. These are the fascists my parents warned me about. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, it's it's so slow moving. That's the thing. Right. We're all boiling frogs, and right. and we keep waiting. Yeah, for an actual like Reichstag fire or what? There've been so many. Well, that's the thing. It's it's never it's not clear. Yeah. Uh, these and and historically these these things are not really clear except in retrospect. Except in retrospect. Right. True. True. So, you know, so what's the you know, when when does it go down? When is it irrevocable? When is the you know, when is it like when is it time for the na- you know? When does the national strike happen? When does when do the riots happen? Well, they've I think been, it's been happening since two thousand eight or nine. Yeah, and the I Reichstag fire was nine eleven. Yeah, know. so you know, here we are, so, and I think the slow moving um, nature of nature of this yeah. is not an accident. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it makes it allows so, for right. the centrist sort of. Wait, wait, everybody. Position. Let's be civil. Yeah. You can't, like, you know, shout at these people in restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm not shooting him. So right. Right. I'm just saying, you know, I'm I'm not an advocate of arms, but I might flip some tables. I'm just saying. Yeah. What would Jesus do? Well, making a whip <laughs> and going on a public rampage, destroying property and cursing people out. That's it's not the, outside the realm of possibility. Just really, saying. it's not. Really, it's not. Yeah. And, oh, this is the thing I was trying to say at dinner, but the kids kept wandering off and I kept getting interrupted. Yeah. Um, that sometimes um, loving your enemies and sometimes um, challenging and harsh correction mm-hmm. is part of loving someone. Yeah. Well, as a parent, that's like you, absolutely, you absolutely right. have to learn that lesson. That that's that sometimes, and, but it's hard because you have to walk the line between. Okay, now I just beat you, <laughs> versus, versus versus. Oh, that's okay, sweetie. Let's just have a a civil conversation about how you've disappointed, Daddy. <laughs> right. Right. But sometimes gonna it's going to be, gonna be a, something in between that's going to feel harsh. It's going to feel know? harsh. It's going to come come down hard. That you've got to hold a firm boundary. Yeah, and that's not going to be really welcomed by the person who's having the boundary held, right? No. No. And that is part of loving someone. So sometimes loving your enemies means holding a firm boundary. Yeah, and that's going to look in a lot of different ways in a lot of different situations. So, and yeah, and it's true. I'm not an advocate of violence, and I'm not a um, what's the word? Pacifist. Uh, I'm not an advocate of violence. Yet I'm not a pacifist. I'm I'm not a revolutionary, but I am a radical. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. take that for what you will. Yeah. Now, well, for me, that plays out as basically constantly wondering what more I should be doing. You know. Oh yeah. Um. And voting ain't it? You know, like. No, I, uh, and I'm gonna vote. Don't yeah. Me. We're, we're everybody gonna, calm down. <laughs> we're not advocating vote. that people don't vote, but we're just saying. As we did a show on this too, where it's like yeah. saying it's quite literally the least you can do, right? the very least. Yeah. And so I'm, you know, I'm, meaning I'm, that you have to do more. <laughs> you, got, you, you got to do so much more. So. So I, I feel like our hospitality is uh, significant, and we could um, do more work on ourselves about what that means and how we do it, mm-hmm. and that that's not a small thing, and that's part of us rejecting fascism. It is. Um, it's hard. It's very hard to build alternative community with people who don't have any ex- experience with traditional community. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Yeah. And, and I, and I, um, I think it's less about. Um, building community with them, and more yeah. about um, uh, cultivating ourselves uh pardon me catechizing ourselves in generosity and mercy Mm. i think it's much more about that than it is about community with with them per se um i mean it's kind of this this, there's this thing right it's like i i tell myself this over and over again that this is a sacrificial thing right but the you know Cleaning the oven for the sixth time in two weeks, you know, I'm, damn sacrificial. I'm 
no longer feeling generous and merciful. Generous, yeah. Like, but yeah, this yeah. isn't our topic. But, no, uh, it's not our topic. But no, no, I think, I think what I'm getting at though, is that whatever work we are called to do, it's not going to be easy or pretty or or uh, gentle. Yeah. Um. No, I just. It, yeah. it it's not helping me that all this is happening in the midst of huge financial burdens and in the midst yeah. of still trying to to finalize you know some solution for our old house, house. And, all kind of, right. and i feel like you know i'm carrying all this weight and then i come home and the the kitchen's completely trashed, trashed. Again. and and it's me. I'm the, the, like the only adult who's going to be here and do this work. And it's, you know, it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> like, here we go again. How great like, is that? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. It's... As, and, right. So you know, it, it would be doing... much more exciting, I don't know, to um, shout down a fascist at Walmart or something. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know what people imagine themselves doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's never as exciting as you think. The organizing work? The organizing and the resistance and and actually um actually stopping fascists is not as exciting as it as you know. It's we talked about this some in, in um Mark Bray's book about everyday anti fascism. Yeah. I do want to mention so you said it's not as uh exciting as you think because I wanna mention Right. Um, that you and I did get out, and I, we haven't had a chance to mention it on the show yet because it was oh, so yeah. long ago. We went to see Chapo Trap House live. Oh, yeah. We did. We did. In Detroit, which was not our best ever date, I have to say. No. But Yeah, it was kind of weak. Uh, um, so they've been touring the Midwest and doing live shows. Sure. And they're trying to draw on sort of an old tradition, even going back to people like Will Rogers, where they... Mm-hmm do improv comedy basically about the news. Yes. Like today's headlines or today's editorials right. or whatnot. Um, they have very lesser or greater degrees of ability mm-hmm. for doing this kind of improv on their feet. And and, and none of them are really Will Rogers. No. Yeah, so. <laughs> Actually, the, but, so a couple of them are better than others. Some of them are pretty much checked out during this show. Um, a couple of them were drunk. One of them was, yeah, one was drunk. One of them was re- just kept check looking at his phone and like, dude, we paid you guys. We, you know, we paid to, paid to, to be, be here. here for this show, and and you're drunk and you're you're checking <laughs> your, your phone. phone, right? And a couple of you seem like <sighs> just bored, right? And, but I, this has a point, which is what the like fighting violence is never actually as exciting as it seems like it's going to. Right. Because during the, at the end of the first half of the show, uh, they were doing a long routine about this Harvard alum thing. That, Yale. The, Yale. Sorry. Yale alum thing that honestly in Detroit, no one was particularly interested in. Yeah, right. Not really. No. And it wasn't going over well. They weren't getting much of a reaction. And a, and a, a guy or guys, it's hard to tell because the acoustics yeah. in the room were pretty bad. And the audience started heckling them loudly, mm-hmm. and we're like, "Huh, okay, so this is that a what, yell alum? what are they? Like, who is this we couldn't on? hear him. We couldn't no, hear what he was, he was saying. saying. But we we don't know what he and said. And they couldn't hear him either. Right. But um, partway through his harangue, after like the third go around or something, um. So this, oh, he wasn't drunk, but was he high? He was smoking a lot. Which one? The, so there was a drunk guy, a guy who was smoke, chain smoking. <laughs> you mean on the, stage or in the audience? Uh, on the stage, oh. there was a guy who was chain smoking. And the, then there was... Uh, the yeah. chain smoker... Wasn't drunk, but I think he was high on Vir- nicotine. Is Virgil. Right. But the guy who was um, who was drinking a lot was Matt. Okay. And uh, he was on, uh, on his phone the whole time? That was Virgil. So but, Virgil was chain smoking and on his phone. Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, I thought they were different guys. But Somebody else was smoking too. A couple. Yeah. Of, and I should just point out, it's it's actually uh, illegal, illegal to smoke, to in, smoke in venues in Michigan. Right, right in, pu- yeah. in public venues in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. and like, what the hell is going on? So Grace is pregnant. We're here in this. Like, breathe the second hand smoking. Like, thanks. Yeah, this is not cool. Um, but um, 
Felix was the guy that actually stood up. He was a, a former bouncer, although he's not a very intimidating guy. Yeah. But he stood up and like strode to the f- edge of the stage and started screaming obscenities at the, <laughs> at the heckler. And I was like, "What's going on?" This is part so of the show, we're or? looking at each other nervously and like huh. we're thinking. So is there going to be a fist fight or or, or what? What's uh, security was like coming through the crowd and it's like so what's what happens now? And we're like. Are they going to have to end the show early? This is yeah, this sucks. This is pretty sucks. This is and so, like, part of me was excited because I'm like, "Hey, so this is happen- more interesting <laughs> than the than the 20 minute routine Dude, they've been doing." Right. But on the other hand, like, if violence actually happens when you're around it, it's not fun. It's it's, not fun. it's frightening. It's nerve wracking, and the aftermath of it is long and tedious. Yeah, you know, Just so much. So yeah. So we don't actually advocate violence, even um, even punching hecklers, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For example, but I never did get a, a completely straight story from either them or from the guy who was the heckler who who says he was the heckler who was chatting with me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, like what was happening or what what his complaint was. He or? he says that he was just complaining that the this routine was, was long super and long and nobody cared about Yale right. alums and then or their you know the stuff they get up to. Right. And but then the Chapo guy said that security told them after the show that the guy because apparently they questioned the guy. They said apparently the guy was a Yale alum. And he was getting upset that they were making fun of Yale alums. But I don't think that happened. So right. Anyway, hard to say. So the show was not stellar. No, I've yeah, I've been better. It was yeah. kind of you've been funnier. I've been yeah. I've been funnier myself. Funnier myself. Yeah, but it's frustrating because. Um, I, I do enjoy listening to Chapo. I don't enjoy a lot of their ironic stance. Oh, ironic stance. It's sort of like the in-jokesmanship. The in-jokesmanship so yeah. much, although I know most of them by now, I feel. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't enjoy the constant ironic stance. Uh, um, they're not always that way, though. Like, very often, um, Will or... or um, or Virgil will do one-on-one interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt and um, uh, Amber will right. do shows together and have good conversations. Matt will do, um, he calls them uh, the inebriated past, which is his yeah. version of drunken history. And he'll take on a particular topic in left-wing history. Yeah. And those are fascinating. You know, I really love listening to those when he releases right. one. There's one he did recently called The Monster Fash, which is about the history of fascism and what it means. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's great, you know. Um, but as like, you know, showing up on the stage to do a live podcast, right? Yeah, not it's, so much. <laughs> I just like, I don't, not even sure the tour was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think on their home turf, like in the Brooklyn area, you know, sure. they had much more sympathetic audiences and their right. audiences tended to be more plugged into th- new stories. And like, new stories and the, yeah, the things yeah. they care about, the things they care about. Right. So they did, right. they did a long routine on, uh, like the worst Yale alumni of all time in New Haven, you know, <laughs> and that's the, gotta be a lot of fun. And the I'm audience sorry. was, was, was there for, was it. there for it. You can right. hear but you know, do it like listening over. listening to a recording of it while I'm working or something, is a different thing than 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 schlepping forty five minutes you know, to right. you know to uh, Detroit on a school night and paying what sixty some bucks for two tickets and a hundred bucks for a sitter for four hours or five seven. Se- six seven hours yeah. yeah, so that we could go do this thing and then trying to get a meal out after it was done and getting home at past midnight. Yeah. You know? No, it was, it's and, not, and the venue was kind of, the venue was, so yeah, the yeah. venue was weird and trashed and under renovation. And, um, I'm not, was it legal? Was it legal oh, for yeah, occupancy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I think so. I'm just asking, <laughs> but, but that was, yeah, that was a disappointment. And, and it re- I really have to ask myself uh, and, um, 
think hard about ever putting in a lot of time and effort to attend a live show like this of a thing that's really yeah. that's entertaining as a podcast right right, right. it they, would be like yeah. it, i mean it's like um it'd be like going to see um paying money to go see terry gross interview someone except not as good right yes <laughs> Ooh, great you get to watch right you know you could just listen on the radio. Yeah, so yeah. it's the kind of thing that, like, as a podcast or a radio show, you can it's tune fun. in and listen in the background as you do right. other things. And there's not a lot of commitment to it, right? No, no. Like, your opportunity you cost out, right. of, of turning it off is not very high. <laughs> right, not very high. And you can just tune out for a few minutes and come back. Yeah, you know. right. Um, if they're doing it, if they're part of the conversation is boring you, you know, you can check your email, right? And right, move on. I guess that's what everybody does now, except on their phones. But I suppose. Yeah. Well, no, and uh, there was also this sort of like, um, nobody respects Detroit. Well, that's true. Nobody respects Detroit. Even these folks, they don't respect Detroit. Really, why the fuck would Detroit want to listen to anything about Yale? <laughs> I mean, just just ask yourself that question. I, I was asking myself that question in, in the audience. Like, guys, you didn't... You know, it was nice that you... Uh, came like, to Detroit. Came to Detroit, and you mentioned Detroit in the opening, and you did yep, a and thing. They, and then they played, came just short. You played a scene from RoboCop, which is supposedly set in Detroit. Set in Det- it's not really filmed in Detroit. But, but, like, the setting is supposed to be Detroit. Yeah, future and, dystopian Detroit, which is now so long ago that it's in the past, in the right? Past. <laughs> And they stopped short of actually trash talking Detroit. Yes, which I guess was nice. It would have been funnier if they actually had come out and roasted Detroit for an hour. You well, know. that actually that would have been funny. You know, you know what? It, What's that? There were some real low hanging fruit too, because their show is named after El Chapo. Right. El Chapo had stuff going on that that he did and was were hap- was happening in Detroit. Right. right. right? It was part of his history. Right, as a drug lord, was like a yacht he bought in Detroit or something. Yeah. I, I don't even. It was just like, I mean, they really could have. They they, they, there's a lot well, they could have gotten into. And here's the thing: if it actually just roasted Detroit for an hour, yes, that's more homage than disrespect. Right. The audience right. would have enjoyed that. Their yes. audience is all young, mostly young. We were pretty much the only <laughs> older. Not, maybe not the, not the oldest, only. But there was a handful of older folks yeah. there, and we were part of the handful. But almost everyone was was white, uh, and now like a white Detroit version of the Brooklyn hipster. Yes, right. So they so could millennial have like Detroit, new Detroit millennials, probably not long time residents, right? No, no, they're part of the new gentrification yeah, no. wave. Oh God, it's really. I don't. I don't want to get into Detroit deeper. <laughs> I'm just going to start crying. You're going to start crying. Yeah. I'm not trying to make you cry. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So you know, if Chapo comes to your town and you're considering seeing them, I would not actually recommend the show. Can't recommend the show. Listen I, to the podcast, podcast. Appreciate what you can about it, but um. Can't recommend the show. And it does make me wonder, like, where do they go with this now that they're tr- trying to build a media empire with a book and a whatnot? So they can either like. Uh, and a live show they can either like let that stuff trail off and just focus on doing the podcast yeah you know, they can do the podcast and here's the thing or they or or else and i think this is quite a likely possibility this is the end of it no yeah. and i but and, and here's the thing about that that's mm-hmm. it's okay that's okay sometimes things end yeah. and they seem reasonably talented individually and it, competent and capable they could do some other thing. If if it ends, I know at least uh, three of them already in media and hooked up into right. left wing media and news and whatnot. Right. And you know, several of them are clearly good enough to do. You know, the thing is, there's no um, since Air America. There's not like. Left, left wing talk radio, radio right? No, no. But several of them would be really good at that. Sure. But, you know, Amber writes for a number of publications yeah. already. So I don't know what Will's going to do, but, you know. But I, don't, you know and, but I think it's it's okay to do a show until it's done and until then stop. Until it's played out, yeah. Do it till it's done and then just stop, play it out, yeah. and then do something else. Yeah. That's, so, 
That's okay. Yeah. So you know, I don't think that would be a tragedy. No, it would be a tragedy. <laughs> so you know, so that was Trap they've, earned, they've earned quite a bit of money. With oh their, yeah, they made, they made some bank. It's good. Yeah. So I'm glad. Yeah. All right. Um, we do have a, a topic, and a this topic, was topic? not it. Yeah. We, oh we're, yeah, the topic. Topic. We're kind of dancing around it and talking a little bit about like very, the fascism. We're very disorganized, everywhere. but um, our 45th president made a comment at a rally. Yeah. On the subject of nationalism. Yeah, and, and, just, and you know, I'm not here to talk about 45, but nationalism, I think we should talk about. I don't want to talk about him per se, except to point out that he said, "I don't have the poll he, quote." He, enga- he made a public embrace of nationalism. Yeah, basically said it has a bad reputation, but I call myself a nationalist, and I think we should be nationalists, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing, and. We're here to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Because uh, this all happened like shortly before a series of mass shootings, right? Yeah. Uh, including uh, a really bad one. Yeah. And you know, they're all really Not bad. that they Yeah. This was a great net, yeah, great mass shooting. No, 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 no. but um, yeah, and I don't believe these things are disconnected. At least, not the exact words oh, that triggered not. people or whatnot. No. But well, this is the stochastic terrorism, stochastic terrorism, right. Right. right? And we've talked about that before. And I feel mm-hmm. like everything we want to say, we've largely talked we've about said before, before. But stochastic terrorism. Look it up if you haven't dug into it. You know, right. you you don't. Um, call out you know or pay people to you know exercise a particular no. plan but no. you spend so so many years um, priming the pump priming them priming people making inflammatory comments that the people who are unstable or who have found themselves so marginalized that they only can lash out mm-hmm. reach the point where it's like hey this is my it's time. trigger and that's actually the latest shooting that's exactly what happened yes right and you can there's a public record, you know. Public. And the thing is, you can't say which shooter where. Well, but you pop. Can, right. Yeah. But you can pretty reliably say. This is going to trigger someone. This is going to trigger someone. Yeah. Yeah. And look. And, and you know. Like several people, actually, yeah. were triggered, right? Right. So, nationalism. So, nationalism, yeah. Um. Did, did you look up definitions? Because I, I was looking up definitions. If you if you want to look up the Webster definition, you're welcome to. Uh, so I'm I'm looking. Um, where am I looking? I'm looking at um, Merriam-Webster. Yeah. And I actually write. I what I have up is patriotism, because I think they're related but not the same. We should try to see if we can um, get some daylight between those two words. Yeah, and now mind you, there's. They describe them as synonyms, right? Yeah. But there are lots of words that are synonym, synonyms, but aren't the same thing. That aren't exactly synonyms. Right. So nationalism. If they were completely synonyms, one of the words would fall into disuse. Exactly. Um, so definition of nationalism, one, loyalty and devotion to a nation. We're going to have to pick those words apart. Mm-hmm. It sounds simple, but yep. there's more going on there. Yep. Two, a nationalist movement or government. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, and we've got here, oh, this is perfect. The difference between nationalism, patriotism, sectionalism, and jingoism. Nationalism has a number of near synonyms, each of which carries its own distinct meaning. Mm -hmm. Patriotism is similar insofar as it emphasizes strong feelings for one's country, but it does not necessarily imply an attitude of superiority. Mm-hmm. Sectionalism resembles nationalism in its suggestion of a geopolitical group pursuing its self-interest, but the group in question is usually smaller than an entire nation. Yep. Jingoism closely resembles nationalism in suggesting feelings of cultural superiority, but unlike nationalism, it always implies military aggressiveness. Bellicosity, yeah. Right. Um Examples of nationalism and ascendance. The war was caused by nationalism and greed. 
Nazism's almost epic nationalism appealed to downtrodden Germans still suffering the humiliation of being defeated in World War I. That wasn't politicized at all. <laughs> um, and so um, patriotism, by contrast, yes. is nearly the same, but love for, love for or devotion to one's country rather than um, the uh, the nation state or, um, yeah, and as Wikipedia says, patriotism, not to be confused with nationalism. Understand they're not the same thing, mm-hmm. right? And it's a political, social, and economic system. There's economics involved in nationalism too. Yes. Characterized by promotion of the interest of a particular nation. Yes. So it's less about love and devotion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and more about... Um, Politics, superiority, superiority yeah. right? Um, and if you think about the the word the patria, the root, the Latin right. root of the word, fatherland. It's the fatherland, your your father, right? Um, the people that made you, the community, the place that you come from. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's only natural, and I eminently reasonable to love those things. Yeah. Right? To be devoted to those things and be committed to those things. And perhaps even to those things ahead of others. Well, right? That's when that's to, where I tend to want to get off the bus. Well and, and I and I think yeah, that's where you want to get tend to want to get off the bus, right? But I think there's a fine line where um I, I was actually talking about this yesterday in a much less politically charged uh, not what, maybe three days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh framing. So with in terms of public school, there's this ethical moral argument about wealthy, well-educated parents not taking their children to private school or parochial school or yeah. homeschool yeah. to maintain the integrity of the public system. David Feldman talks about that. He said he ins- right. insisted that they put their kids through public school and he doesn't regret it. He said they got good education. And, well, and that's wonderful, right? Yeah. Um, but when the public schools utterly fail certain children, yeah. Yeah. you can't you can't use that ethical argument as a cudgel right. that they remain there right. and continue to be neglected and mistreated out of some kind of I think ethical uh, standard to remain there. I think he would say it's okay for his kids not to step on step over everyone else to get a, a leg up. Right. That's okay. Right. Oh, right, right. And and that he feels good about that. That right. you know, but um, had they been actually, you know, like damaged or or the you know we we've t- having autistic children we we know mm. how often autistic children are physically abused, restrained, or you know, not not just by the other students, right? Yeah, yeah. in this system like system. this, and that's like like I just said, that's I think where we can reasonably get off the bus, <laughs> right? And say, so in we that, can't support that. We can't support. So in that yeah. same way, right? There's an element of well, if my child's going to be harmed, yeah. Maybe I'm not interested in the common good. But harmed is not right. the same thing as oh, I'm going to use my economic power. To help my child step on everyone else, to get a, a oh, wrong right, up higher, right. higher up the ladder, right? Right. The, and not doing that is not the same thing as your child being harmed. Precisely, right? Yes. So there's a there's a, a lot of nuance about this business where mm-hmm. you would say put your child interests first to yes. be sure that your child's not harmed. Yes. Versus putting your child's interests first to make sure they. Get a leg they, up on everyone. Become the next Supreme Court justice. Right. Whatever. Right. Okay. Um, and that's there's some nuance to that. Mm-hmm. But part of the conversation is the way in which you have a special responsibility to your own child. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And to their care and safety and, duty, and interest. A duty of care. Right. Um, and that's where people start to get kind of gray. Yeah. And unclear. Yeah. And can't really see the line between ensuring your children don't come to harm Mm -hmm. versus ensuring your children get every possible advantage. Right. Right. And honestly, I, I want to make sure my children are harmed. I don't know that they need any advantages. Right. You're going to, you're going to make sure that, that since, you know, you went to Harvard and you're a legacy, your kid's going to go to Harvard too. Yeah. Yeah. I I wouldn't encourage any of the kids to go to Yale. Right. That's where we, that's where we're legacy folks. And, um, 
I, I can't say that I would encourage them. Right. Right. Um, I'm not even sure I would encourage my kids to go to the school I went to, you know, even if they were fully funded. It's a good, good open question. Because I don't know that they're really moving in the direction of social responsibility and financial affordability that I would like to see. Spoiler you know? alert. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they're really, yeah. I, actually, the only yeah. college I feel like I would... sixty Tuition, $62,000 a year. <laughs> right. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> what are they going to do? In, in 2018. Like, what right. are they going to do? Yeah. What the hell are they doing? They're going to buy him a career. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, I think the only um, academic institution... Yeah, five, uh, five t- it's gone up, by the way, five times faster than inflation. Than inflation. Yeah. Uh, that was, at least that was my rough back-of-the-envelope calculation. Yeah. It was 12,000 when I was a student. So. There's um, a uh, an institution, I think it's in Berea, Kentucky, Um I think it was one of the first integrated universities in the United States, mm-hmm. integrated during the 19th century. Um, I should the, say it was 12000 and that was way beyond what my family could afford, and so I would not have been able to attend that school if we weren't very oh, right. well funded, funded with scholarships. Anyway, sorry. Berea, mm. Kentucky. Berea, Kentucky, Berea College. Um, is It's a great institution of higher learning. Um, and you learn... All the sort of things you learn in college, mm-hmm. it's free to everyone that attends, Yeah, and only working class kids can go. And everyone works. Right? Everyone works. Yeah, yeah, everyone has a job. Everyone's got a job. Everyone keeps the school running. Yeah. And it's a model that, sh- that needs to, to grow. It needs, needs to grow. To spread. It's, yeah. it's actually the only place I would encourage my kids to go, and I think it's one of the few places they probably couldn't. <laughs> so, you know. There are, there are a few other small, interesting institutions that I'd be in favor of them um, exploring we've talked about some Check. of them before yeah yeah but. so uh but back to nationalism yeah, patriotism sorry. i think patriotism is this love and devotion and duty of care mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and represents and embodies that and and, and it, it has a certain um i want to say whiff of chauvinism is about about it sure the way people are like oh hosmer mountain is the is the soda distillery in my part? It's the best soda. Right. Like it's soda, okay? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's soda. There's no bad. Right? There's no it's bad. Made right? from pure Tibetan oxygen and hydrogen. <laughs> no, but so so you know, I had a great, long, stupid debate yeah. with another friend of mine from the Northeast about how about ho- soda about soda, and I was all Hosmer Mountain, and he was all whatever he was doing in the Hudson <laughs> Valley. I don't you remember know. their name. Right, and that's a so a that's chauvinism. That's not even like a wine or a beer that actually has terroir, right? You know, no, so. no, it's it's a soda. Um, well, and all these places, and the places that I grew up, mm-hmm. AC a, a, um, a. Peterson Farms delivered our milk, yeah, and it was the best milk because it was my milk, right. you know, and all right. that, right? And there's a certain chauvinism that's part of that, where like our children have this mildly irrational affinity for spots bread. <laughs> right, right. Okay, because it's... Because you, you started getting it in Saginaw fairly regularly, even though we weren't really fans we're of really, white bread, right? Not really fans. And personally, I got to say, yeah. as a non-fan of white bread, I, I can see why people it like it. It was pretty tasty. It was a it nice, was fresh Italian bread, right? Right. And, you know, we'd make grilled cheese or whatever, yeah. right? No, it's people. People who grew up with that bread really remember it. Fondly. Really remember it, remember yeah. it fondly, and that's part of patriotism, of loving your place, yeah, and the people in it and the people from it, yeah, and feeling connected to it and devoted to it, and a responsibility to care for it, yeah, right, yeah, um, and that's, and I think patriotism is good. Well, the responsibility part is huge because that implies yeah. that you actually have to take care of it and not let the place become a shithole country (laughs) like fall into disrepair yeah yeah for example and that's and so i have always even after i left the republican party i've always considered myself to be a patriot yeah in those terms a patriot does not want to let their country his or her country go to hell fall into slide into fascism no you don't you really don't or economic um despair Right or um, extremes of uh, 
income inequality or, you know, no. infrastructure collapse or no. climate change disasters. For example. Yeah. All those things. Right. A patriot would be opposed to. And would work actively to forestall to or pose, reverse. forestall, reverse. I mean, and think of it in, it's much easier for me. I know people poo-poo the analogy or the framing. I'm saying, imagine if this was your own family, your own neighborhood, your own community. Mm-hmm. And translate it down to the, those terms, yeah. because that will make more sense. Right. right. Right? So if there was toxic waste running down your street, mm-hmm. wouldn't you feel like you had to do something about that? Right. You're not going to make an immigration analogy, are you? Oh, no. no I'm not, <laughs> not going to make an immigration. I, I mean, I've done that before, but I'm, that's not where I'm going with this. Right. What I'm talking about is the how a patriot, out of love... Right. would do something about that right. and not be like, oh, well, you know, a little toxic waste, not right. a big deal. Right. You know, you're, not, you're that's going to move you to action because of your love for the place. Yeah, but right? it's actually, it's people And the now, people that live there. People now use patriotism as a cover for basically the most self-indulgent um, they self They use patriotism as a cover for nationalism. Well, which is before right. we, we even get to that, I'm like, for basically saying... They want their house hmm. to be great. They want their school to be great. Yeah. They want their entertainment options and their shopping options and their everything to be great. Fantastic. And not to have to bother. interact or bother with anyone who isn't just like them along the way. But Right. But yes, they and they do use it as a cover for nationalism. But I was starting out saying it's actually for a lot of people, it's something much more narrow than that. It's just I don't want to have to look at anything that I didn't grow up with or that inconveniences me in any way. Well, there's that. There's very much that. Mm-hmm. And think about it in your own home and the way you feel. Yeah. About I don't, the food you like, the music you enjoy, the environment that you like to live in. Sure. Right? That's so I, I don't that's sort of a that's a downside. Yeah. But I don't think it's perverse. Right? That you know what? I patriotism is not necessarily perverse. Yes. It's not necess- I don't think patriotism is necessarily right. perverse by definition. Right. Can right? I can I do nationalism? You can do nationalism. A little bit. So Yeah, go. So my radical take on nationalism is that nationalism as a positive thing cannot exist because it's fundamentally nonsensical. And oh, it's yeah. fundamental, fundamentally nonsensical because a nation is not a thing. It's ab- a nation is an abstract concept. It's not something that you can love or appreciate. And so your notions of patriotism immediately slide sideways into things that you are loving as proxies for the nation. The nation, right. And the things that people choose to love and claim are the nation are tend to fall into two categories, and they're two very old words, mm-hmm. blood and soil. Oh, yeah. So, because a nation is not a thing. Uh, you know, yeah, it's not a real thing. It's, it's an abstract notion. It's actually... The, the institutions and history of a nation, in most cases, a modern nation, is really just the history of a crime. Yeah. Right. The history of an expropriation, of a theft, of a genocide, and I've got of to an say, invasion. This is every modern nation state. Every modern nation state. That is the definition of every modern nation state. Now, I'm not going to um, necessarily say that say the first nations were of such glorious moral character that their nations weren't formed out of blood and brutality but that's oh, the yeah well the, the iroquois confederacy right um was preceded by centuries of bloodshed right and led to this sort of like pax americana it's the only pax right. americana i know of right right <laughs> where they just said okay let's let's just stop fighting so it's not necessarily just modern nations but well, it is right but those nations yes are actually formed during the modern the early modern era 
Oh, the the yeah. they're quite well. Yeah, yeah okay, modern, modern in substance, but we think of them as antiquity. You know. Oh yeah, we think of but them. But they weren't. And yes. when we say modern nation states, we're talking about places that came to exist in the nineteenth yeah. and twentieth century. But you know, so yeah. so, but let's say you can imagine the na- nation states that were formed, say, before leaving any history, right? You know, before well, leaving written history, sure. those aren't a thing anymore. Those aren't a thing. I actually, uh, the only the only states that I recognize as legitimate or functional, mm-hmm. and I think functionality is, is a huge part of legitimacy, mm-hmm. um, are city states. Yes, a uh, city state level. Right, a city state level. So you've right. got something the size of Toledo. Right. That right. could be a state right. and it might function. Yeah. But larger than that, you're immediately talking about abstractions. Complete and, abstractions. And I mean the only abstraction that you could really ascribe to the United States as a nation that makes any sense, that's a thing that you can point to mm-hmm. is you can say the institution of government. Yes. And so for, you know, for a conservative to say, <laughs> I'm a nationalist, I love the United States, that conservatism does not mean doesn't the, make any in- sense. the institution of government because, right. you know, cons- modern conservatives are, are anti-government, right? You know, at least allegedly, or anti-big yeah. government or anti-federalism, yeah. even though they're <laughs> like the Federalist Society, <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> yeah, which... So you know, they're all, all about states' yeah. rights and all this, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. So, so that's that's not sensible, right? Right. And then the things that they slide into instead, when they have to get up and give a speech or rally their troops or rally the base or whatnot about the the nation, right? Turn into blood and soil, and blood right. and soil represent two things. The blood part literally turns into the bloodline of the people you're trying to rally, and yes. how they're racially distinct and superior to the people around them, the people right. from the outsiders, the people, the interlopers, the invaders, the immigrants and all that. That's the mm-hmm. blood. And the soil refers back to this. And every, we've been reading the anatomy of fascism mm-hmm. by Paxton. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I haven't finished it. It's a difficult book. It's quite challenging, but um, all these fascist movements go through a phase, a fake um, agriculturalism phase. Yeah. Where um, they're looking at the soil, the soil of the nation, and how, you know, they start to um, raise up mm-hmm. and promote the idea that um, this nation was built on the soil by the people of the soil, you know, who, who were the agriculture, the agricultural, the pastoralists, the agriculturalists, you know, right. who. Um, not so, actually not past not pastoralists not not um, nomadic people or whatnot but the farmers right but, yeah who you know who raise wheat for the for the fatherland you know for the glory you know for the glory build of the strong nation. bones build you know <laughs> for the future of of the nation the right nation, right but that's actually fake because yeah because they're talking about Monsanto because fascist movements also are modernist in the sense that they follow the doctrine of modernism, as in Italy, where they're addicted to violence and speed and machinery and progress and, and, you know, technology and innovation, particularly in the tools of warfare. Yes. Right. Which is... Which destroys the soil. Which destroys the soil, poisons the earth, and is antithetical in most ways to traditional agriculture and yeah. traditional agricultural life, you know. Now, as a side note... But that's the soil part that people slide into. As so, a side note... Yes. We have a podcast in us about how the agricultural revolution... Was a bad idea. Was, yeah, was a bad idea. <laughs> the root idea. of all, all our present evils. Mm. That would be the love of bunny, but the uh, but no, so where, where where the human race really went, really went took off the, the rails. wrong fork. Yeah, it took the two wrong roads, fork. Two, two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and we took the agricultural the uh, revolution. And, and it was it's been bad ever since. Made all the difference. <laughs> yeah, and not a good one. That's an aside. Yeah, yeah. But yet, if the claim is this love of the soil, right. It's wholly disingenuous. Of course, because right? the first thing they do is, is... Salt the earth. Salt the earth and then go leave the soil behind and go invade foreign Some countries. Some other place. And, right. and run empires and try to, right. to 
you know, spread their empire and gain I mean, it's, territory. It's, it's very much the strat. It's it's um um it's an explicit an explicit explicit uh, uh play out of what you see in um the convergence of neo conservative and neoliberal politics mm-hmm. of the last 50 years mm-hmm. right it's so you try to talk to people about neoliberalism neoconservatism and yeah. how they're, they're actually kind of the same thing yeah and yeah, they're converged they're, they've converged and found significant common ground yep and you're kind of like talking about the Carter administration and getting into the Clinton administration and you know then you've got to do this whole thing about the Reagan administration and and so on yeah and kind of walk through all of that and walk through how much of a departure um, Carter was from Ford and Nixon mm-hmm. and so on right you got to walk through all these things and then you're kind of like your head spinning people's eyes you got to talk over. about the history of, of monopolies right and our you know and refusal to a refusal to keep busting monopolies and, but yeah there's lots the to blood it. and soil thing the fascist blood and soil thing yeah where they say one thing to the base right and do another right that's what we've been watching unfold for the last 50 years right you say one thing to the base because the base shows up for it Yep. And then you do something else, and the only thing you're interested in is empire. Right. That's so, all you're doing. It's so you, all a cover for yeah. empire. So you, you you build the wall. You say you're going to build the wall, and then yeah. you invade Iran. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And everyone's like, build the wall, build the wall, build the wall. What's happening in Iran? Where's Iran? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what you're getting. Yeah. And then there's some kind of hand waving and conversation. And you're like, "Oh well, you know, we couldn't do the wall because you know Mexico wouldn't pay, or, or something." <laughs> and it's all okay. And you show up at the polls and you vote for them again. Yep. Or whatever. Yep. Or vote for us. We'll protect Medicare and Social Security. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Medicare and Social Security evaporates, and they're like. The Republicans did it, and you're like, "Oh, I understand," and you show up and vote for them again, <laughs> and so or, or whatever, you know. We have to we have to save Obamacare. You gotta save Obamacare. We had to do this. We had to do that. Yeah. So here we are. We were helpless to stand up against the nomination of of such a a virile and potent Supreme Court justice. <laughs> there was nothing we could do, uh, and you're like, okay. I guess I'll vote for you again since you were so effective last time. Yeah. Or whatever. I mean, whatever justifications people make in their own heads. You're going to let me cook, kick the football this time, right? Right? Because <laughs> it's so much fun if I get to kick the football. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah so all these cultural issues, all these things, um, the blood and soil, basically. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, the, fa- the open fascists and the crypto fascists... Uh, uh, they use a lot of the same tactics. Mm-hmm. They use the same right. tactics, right. and when it's open and explicit, it's nakedly blood and soil politics. Yeah, but yet now we've got a whole news network that is in utter denial as a propaganda machine about mm-hmm. this, right? And the own you know the White House press secretary denying oh. these things ever happened or they mean what they meant. Oh, that doesn't mean that. I know he said bitch slapper, but that wasn't like a call to violence. You know? <laughs> like, oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. 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 So you just kind of like, oh, well, for me, a lot of some of the day to day, I don't even follow it. Yeah. I, I know they're lying. Right. I know it's Their propaganda. mouths are moving, right? Right. So. It's, there's like no information. Yeah. There. No, it's, it's like, I, I keep watching. Democrats and whatnot. Yeah. I keep watching them say, basically over and over, "Well, what a shock! This will surely wake people up now, and everyone will realize, you know." Or they're still also um, believing that Mueller's Wait, gonna Mueller is gonna ride in on a white Mueller horse. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> go on without me. Yes, they still, people still bring that up. They still are saying somehow he's going to go to jail or that he's, or that he's going to be impeached. I'm like, and? who's, who's, who's doing this? Where, where, <laughs> like, where are the people intervening? Yeah. None like, of his own party will, will say anything in a opposition most except of your you know party what they won't say anything they will um decry the rudeness on both oh, that's sides so rude. the, they will decry the <sighs> the the incivility so uncivil. on both sides they get get their fainting couch ready <laughs> yeah but nothing's ha- happening and Mueller's going to release his report and a whole lot of pussy hat democrats are going to explode. They're going to shit the bed. It's like, not going to be pretty. I don't want to drive on the freeway with these people like the day after because they're going to be like driving into bridge abutments en masse. You know, like, nothing means anything <laughs> anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like fiery balls of death all over the highways. And, you know, or, or they'll be such. attacking... They'd be attacking babies in supermarkets or something, <laughs> saying, you've got nothing to live for. <laughs> <laughs> or no, no, no. You know what they will actually do? You know what they will actually do? They'll blame the left. They'll blame the left. Yeah. yeah. For what right. the right did. All right. So I don't. And how their compatriots did nothing to stop it. So I'm going to be out there with my told you so. <laughs> Told you so. And I'm probably going to get the shit kicked out of me. You know? Told you so. We'll oh, I doubt that. Yeah. No. No, they're because they're so civil. They're but, very uh, civil. But no, it's like, great, It's weird how they It's just like it's system. like in 2016 where the head of a political science department at a major American university, university berated me and mocked me on Facebook until I finally unfriended him for for yelling like just a, ass? ranting about but her emails. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ! Can you Dude, even you see yourself? Actually, no. Our twelve-year-old is more mature uh, yeah. than that. Oh, Sam! Sam's great. He's yeah. uh he's quite a quite a young a young mensch. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's all right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So no, it's it's really so I, I can't even call people twelve-year-olds anymore. Now that I have one who's right. you know, much more mature than that. Right. <laughs> what are you right. five? Come on. Right. So th- there's. And that does nothing to solve the problem. Right. Right? When apparently the conversation I thought we were having right. was how if we just voted for your team, yeah, they would stop these things from happening. Right. So people no. voted. I didn't. I'm yeah. just going to put it right there. We are. I didn't. But people voted for your team to stop this. And as far as I can tell, your yeah. team joined them? Yeah. The, so, the, you know. This by, rise of, of nationalism, bipartisan everything, you know, crypto-fascism, is, is an existential threat to our country. Yeah, it really it, is. It is. And we are beyond tepid electoralism. Oh, way we're beyond. We're not saying don't vote, but we're saying a everything lot of these things the are now. not going to change Without, and we're not talking about going to, you know, rioting. We're talking about withhold your support. We're talking about, yeah. about protest and strikes. And it's not, the thing is, if you listen to um, Hedges tell it, only some small percentage of the general population has to actually be willing to, to stop what they're doing. Like 10%. It's not very much. Nope, one out of 10. It's like if 10% of American workers said, nope, we're not participating in this anymore, the billionaires in charge say, oh, we better do something a little different. Because... It threatens their their income. It doesn't really... I know it doesn't feel like this. It doesn't feel like this. The system is fragile. But the system is fragile. Yep. And they exist at our collective at, pleasure. At our pleasure. It's right. true. They they exist because we let most them. of us are convinced that letting them exist is good for us. It's good for us somehow. Yeah. So really, 10% of us saying, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. I don't know about this arrangement anymore. Is... Is enough to get them to act. It's enough to get them to act. That's all it takes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Uh, if we, and so, I'm not telling. I'm not willing to tell anyone what to do. 
I'm not able to tell anyone what to do. Uh, but I'm, I'm. I don't know what to do. Well, I've got ideas, right? But I'm not sure. willing to, to tell anyone what to do. There's all kinds of traditional means of of solidarity things. and protest and creative this and that. Look to occupy. You know, yeah, that was something. Consensus. I mean, they started out without power, trying to build a movement that applied consensus leadership, you know, and inclusiveness, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, essentially an an anarchist movement. It, essentially, yeah. And I, you know, of course they were crushed, but well, that's um, and that's why they were crushed. Yes. You know, it looked like maybe they might do something. It was taken off. It was going yeah, down. Things do were something. happening. Yeah. And they did succeed in doing some things. People now know what you're talking about when you say the 99%. You know. For example, right? So they, they changed the, the discourse. They changed right. the thinking. And that, and right now, changing the discourse could go a very long way. Yeah. Right? And so here, here we are, you know, <laughs> our... Our pathetic little podcast. Try and change the discourse. I'm I'm reading The Anatomy of Fascism to my kids as a bedtime story. story. (laughs) Just changing the discourse. Well, and and to be... Along with The Haunting of Hill House. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's how, you know, it's that time of year. Hey, guys, did you know it's the most wonderful time of the year? Yeah, it is. It's right here. Did you know that... um, I didn't know this when I started reading this book, but Netflix has a series based on The Haunting of Hill House that's running now. Really? Really. Oh, the thing is, it's like has almost nothing to do with the original story. Oh. It's just it's a horror, you know, yeah, fantasy yeah. story. I am good. So, uh, but apparently, it's scary enough that people are complaining that they like it's too scary. They're it's, it's too, too scary. scary. They can't sleep. They're they're like getting sick. They're having yeah. panic attacks. They have to turn the well, TV off. Like that sounds like a successful show to me. Successful horror <laughs> show. Yeah, I think you're. I think you hit the yes. nail on the head there. Yeah. No, Shirley Jackson was. She was a freak. Uh, we're the more so I we yeah, we, we read freak. together. Mm-hmm. Um, we read um, we have always lived in the castle, which yeah. I had not read before, and I thought it was really good. It was, and then good now we're reading me. the haunting of Hill House, and her prose is just amazing. Yeah, just amazing. She can what turn she's phrase. what she's doing with the structure of the novel, the way she's building everything up with her characters and. Having the the audience identify with things happening, it's 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 amazing. It's remarkable. Yeah. So read. Uh, so read read some read the Jackson. haunting of Hill House if you get a chance. Oh, if you get a chance, I mean, I, yeah. I would generally recommend any Sergey Jackson just to get your feet wet. Yeah. I yeah. was suspicious at first because yeah. you know I no, don't like change. I you don't like change. books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, it's hard for me to get invested. You, in you fiction. don't like fiction. I don't like fiction. You know, as much as I do. Anyway. Yeah, I, and so. This is a hard nut to crack. And like I said, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Yeah. And here's why. It's why I don't tell my children what to do, largely. They know what to do. Mm-hmm. You know what to do. And, and I, so I'm, and it, I'm pushing back against you here. You know what to do. And it varies from place to place, person varies from to place person, to place, situation person to, person. to situation. Yeah, moment to moment, right. situation to situation. But you know what to do. Yeah. No, it's when it's time to stand up to the bully, you will not actually be nervous about standing up to the bully. Right. And I mean, you know, if you, well, I don't know everyone's family situation, but it's the kind of thing your parents told you what to do. Right. And you know. Right. Um, you know what's right, you know what's wrong. Yeah. You know what to do. So, I don't know. So, so for me, it's, it's less heartbreak. I mean, my heart's been broken a long time. Yeah. And, and much more like, well, here it is. Yeah. I always knew this was coming. And I, like, I, I, I have a very clear memory. I was about, I was about nine and it was some varying Holocaust or transatlantic slave trade discussion mm-hmm. um, over the dinner table. And, excuse me. And um, it occurred to me then that like if I had to decide, like you know, I'm in France, right? And it's 1942. Uh, I'd be part of the resistance, right? Yeah. I wasn't gonna hide, and I wasn't gonna flee, and I wasn't gonna leave. I'd be part of the resistance. 
Yeah, but you got to define that for yourself. But you've got to define that for what yourself. What that means. I can't, I can't tell you. Yeah. You can't... You probably had some experience in your life where you knew what side you were on and where you, where you were going to go. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you what that is. Right. And it's like, you know, I can't tell you what to do for a job. I can't tell you who to marry. Right. right. But I can promise you that you'll know. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll go along with that. Yeah. Because people always said that to me. Right. It's like, well, when you meet the right person, you'll know. Well, you'll know. And I... I was like, like oh, well, I dated a lot of people. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, I think you just have to like, that's just a thing people, people say. say. You have to kind of like say, well, this person's not so bad. I can tolerate this person. Yeah, so we'll settle no. down. And yeah. But you actually, know. no, I did know. Well, no. So so it's my wonderful wife of 17 years. It's more like that. Yeah. That your whole life you've been catechized and cultivated mm. for what you're supposed to do and you know what it is and you'll know it when you see it so <clears throat> so yeah or, or what, what was the yeah i don't know if they i don't know y- y- you like to imagine that you'd fight yeah and yeah and i always imagined that i'd fight rather than um rather than hide or flee Fighting means different things to different people. It does. And it's not as glamorous as everyone it's not likes to make it out to be. <laughs> it's not cool yeah. and fun. Yeah. I'm fi- uh, yeah. 51 years old. I don't know if I'm going to be. And it may not actually uh, mean shock fisticuffs. Troops. Right. Well, that's the thing. It doesn't. I, it, it, it isn't, I, you know, fighting isn't fisticuffs necessarily. No. Not for most people. It's not. Not for most people. I mean, the fight can look different for everybody. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, I've got one thing I've got to just mention. I want to mention on the podcast. Sure. Um. My friend John Hathaway that mm. I told you he passed recently. Yeah. Um it, it was shocking. Um he well it wasn't shocking and it was. He'd lived his entire life with Marfan syndrome and always expected that he would die young. He yeah. was 41. Yeah. He had it's a terrible condition. Yeah. It's a difficult it's a very difficult condition. Yeah. But um um he never laid his hands on anyone. But he was one of the greatest fighters I've ever known. Hmm. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Um, it was a great inspiration to me in many ways. And uh, I was shocked to see him go. He was, seemed to be doing so well. He was having yeah. a good stretch. And then just one night, yeah, he had a seizure and he was gone. Hmm. And that was that. But no, um, he was a great fighter. A really great fighter. And I admired him deeply. And he never lifted a finger or laid a hand on anyone. Not like that. He was wheelchair bound the last ten years of his life, I think. Wow. Yeah. But you know, still a fighter. Still a fighter. So we, we could, there's something each of us can do. Yeah. All right. I think we're gonna wind it up. Yeah, I think we're there. Yeah. Again, everyone, thank you for listening, and we're sorry that we've been gone on an unannounced hiatus <laughs> and we'll try not to do it again <laughs> but you know even what to us. <laughs> yeah but you know what i th- think as this year grinds to a messy halt um yeah things are only going to get more chaotic for us for the next yeah. eight nine ten eight to, weeks or so yeah and we're going to have a new baby yeah. so um our schedule may very well fall apart again and I happen. can't really apologize for that. It's just, you know, it's priorities, what's going on. Right. right? And sometimes I just, uh, I've been the one, like, you're ready. And I'm saying, you know what? If we record now, I'm still going to be trying to edit and upload this at 2.30 in the morning. I can't do it. Can't I'm do 50 it. years old. I'm not 25. We're right? 35. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so there are. it is. You've been listening to the Grace and Paul Podcast. Check out the show blog at podcast.blogspot.com where you can leave comments or search for the Grace and Paul Podcast on Facebook or YouTube. Bye. Later. <laughs>